single EG4 inverter supplies 100% of the electricity to this cabin. So what is the complete cost? About $3,500 to run this off-grid cabin. A system like this would also power your RV, a motorhome, an off-grid hunting camp, and could even work as a massive backup system for your house in case the power goes out. But today we're going to be doubling the power to this house by paralleling two EG4 3000 watt inverters totaling 6,000 watts. Doubling the output of power for this cabin is going to give us much more flexibility. We'll be able to run 120 volt and 240 volt if we ever need to. Not only that, one of these inverters will accept 5,000 watts of solar, and with two of these inverters, we'll be able to accept 10,000 watts worth of solar. This way, in the future, we can always upgrade our system by adding more solar panels, more batteries, and even more inverters if we have to. You can actually parallel many of these EG4 inverters together. So if you start small, you can always continue to build your system. Right now 200 amp hours of these batteries is what is powering the house. These batteries are only running around $800 a piece, while the EG4 inverter here is just going to cost you $674. But before we get started, let's just go over the price real quick of what a system like this would cost you. $674 for each inverter, that's about $1,400. Then your two equal worthy $800 batteries, that's 800 and 800, that's 1600. That's a total of 3000 so far, so now let's check out the solar panels. You will be able to get 10 of these brand new 375 watt solar panels for right around $870. Right now, those are the cheapest solar panels I can find on the market. This is also the cheapest server rack batteries that I can find on the market. And the EG4 inverters are also one of the best and lowest priced on the market. Keep in mind, if you wanna start off with a smaller system like I initially did, you could use only one battery and one EG4 inverter. This would bring the total cost of a system like this to around 2,500. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get our inverter removed from the wall here. And then we're going to be installing a fire resistant cement board here on the back wall. Anybody having a problem with all these little ladybugs this year? Uh, they seem to be anywhere there's kind of a, a little bit of heat. They were here last year, but just not too bad, but they are here in abundance this year. I'm gonna put these little conduit fittings in here. They're really cheap and, and easy to put in, so let me show you real quick. Basically, you're just unscrewing this, putting this here, putting your gasket over here. Uh, then you're gonna put your ring on the inside there. This will let the wires run through here without cutting them here on the edges. We'll be taking this uh, flexible conduit here and running it to these once we get all the wiring hooked in. Okay, we have the two EG4 inverters mounted against the wall here. We also mounted the junction box. So now let's go ahead and run the wiring and the conduit. I would say we're going to cut it about right there. I'm just using these uh, little pipe cutters that you use like on pets. Let's see what that does there. So let me get all this wired in, then we'll move over here and do the other side. All right, so far we've got almost everything hooked up here. So we got everything running down through the conduit into this distribution box here. And uh, we got everything on this side running down, except this last one here. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this last one here and wire it in. And then after we get that done, we're gonna wire everything together here in this box. And then we're gonna run our wiring out of the box, going to our solar panels and going to our house. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here real quick and explain it for those that don't know. 
Once again, the AC in is going to be coming from a generator. Uh, the AC out is what's going to the house. And the PV in is the solar panels that are coming in. Now you're gonna have the same thing on this side. PV in, AC out, AC in. Now when all those run together down here in the box, we're basically going to parallel them all together, wire for wire. When you do that, it's going to double the power that it's capable of receiving. So instead of this inverter taking 5,000 watts, now they're going to be able to take 10,000 watts worth of solar panels. And instead of it pushing out 3,000 watts of power to your house, it's now going to push out 6,000 watts of power. So, all right, let me finish wiring this up. Okay, now finally we are working on the DC side. So we have our breaker here, and below that we have our 200 amp T-Class fuse. Okay, so now we have both breakers on each side and both T-Class fuses on each side. Now it's time to run the positive wires to the battery, and then we're going to run a negative wire from each one to the battery. So after we got the two inverters paralleled together here, we went ahead and hooked in our EcoEarthy server rack batteries. So we paralleled these two batteries together here, negative to negative, positive to positive, and then of course we're running the positive off this side up to this inverter, and then we're running the positive up to this inverter. Same thing with the negative, negative up to this inverter, and negative up to this inverter. Okay, here we are, we have everything wired together, everything is ready to go, it's ready to turn the power on to the house. So I'm staying with 120 volts for now because I don't have anything in my cabin that runs off 240. With that being said, when I go to the settings here on each individual inverter, I need to go to number 28. It needs to be set to PAL single phase. We're going to turn on one of the batteries here. We'll turn them both on. Now there's power coming out of these, but it's a slightly lower voltage and the voltage is going into the inverters right now. That's the uh, pre-charge resistor inside of here, slowly charging these up. So when you turn on the full power, it doesn't hit real hard, cause the problem. Now that we have both inverters on, we'll go ahead and hit power. There they go, they're powering up. So far, so good. Let's see what we got here. Okay, P for parallel mode. This one's P for parallel mode. All right, we're not putting out any output yet. Okay, there's an output. And there's the output. Okay, so there it is. They're in parallel mode and they're both putting out 120 volts. So that's great. Looks like it's working fine and they've paired up good together. Okay, now that we have all of this hooked up and installed, the last thing that we need to do is hook in our PV power or our solar panel power. We're not going to do that right now because we're about to install 7,000 watts worth of solar panels to run on these two inverters. And when we install those solar panels, I'm gonna be running new wires to these inverters. So I'm not gonna hook up the old solar panels just yet. I'm actually extending the solar panel array out here from 12 panels to 20. These are the panels that I'll be installing. I bought these 355 watts solar panels about three weeks ago and they're already sold out when i mention these great deals on youtube like this they sell out quick so if you're interested in purchasing a 375 watt solar panel for about 87 dollars a piece i'll leave a link in the description for that but once again you better get them while you can it's really hard to find solar panels for a great deal like that all right well if you have any questions about paralleling these eg4 inverters leave a comment and i'll try to get back with you and help you out i'll leave links in the description here of the eg4 inverters and the 87 dollars solar panels all right, I'll see y'all in the next video.